Uh, as previously announced by the President, we are announcing additional sanctions against the Iranian regime as a result of the attack on U.S. and allied troops. First, the President is issuing an executive order authorizing the imposition of additional sanctions against any individual owning, operating, trading with, or assisting sectors of the Iranian economy, including construction, manufacturing, textiles, and mining. And let me be clear, these will be both primary and secondary sanctions. The EO also allows us to designate other sectors in the future as Secretary Pompeo and me think is appropriate. Second, we are announcing 17 specific sanctions against Iran's largest steel and iron manufacturers, set three Seychelles-based entities, and a vessel involved in the transfer of products. As a result of these actions, we will cut off billions of dollars of support to the Iranian regime, and we will continue our enforcement of other entities. Third, we are taking action against eight senior Iranian officials who advanced the regime's destabilizing activity and were involved in Tuesday's ballistic missile strike. Secretary Pompeo will comment more on this. Today's sanctions are part of our commitment to stop the Iranian regime's global terrorist activities. The President has been very clear we will continue to apply economic sanctions until Iran stops its terrorist activities and commit that it will never have nuclear weapons. I'll now turn it over to Secretary Pompeo. Thank you, Stephen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, President Trump is delivering on the pledge that he made. Uh, the day after Iran attacked American forces in Iraq, where there will be a series of new sanctions. Secretary Mnuchin just mentioned uh, eight senior Iranian officials that are responsible for the regime's violence, both at home and abroad. Uh, we're striking at the heart of the Islamic Republic's inner security apparatus. These sanctions targets include the Secretary of the Supreme National Council and the Commander of the Basij Forces. That's the regime's brute squad which has in the last few months killed approximately 1,500 Iranians who were simply demanding freedom. Our action also targets other senior leaders close to the Ayatollah. They've carried out his terrorist plots and destabilizing campaigns across the Middle East and around the world. They've employed soldiers across the region's battlefields. They've trained militias in Iraq, Syria, and elsewhere in the arts of domestic repression. Today, they're accountable for murder and mayhem. The goal of our campaign is to deny the regime the resources to conduct its destructive foreign policy. We want Iran to simply behave like a normal nation. We believe the sanctions that we impose today further that strategic objective. Our campaign is composed of diplomatic, economic <coughs> components that have deprived the regime of billions in revenue that regime has used to fuel death and destruction across the Middle East and all across the world. Sadly, the previous administration had opened up revenue streams for Iran. Um, but under our administration, revenue, oil revenues are down by 80 percent, and Iran cannot access roughly 90 percent of its foreign currency reserves. And not even two weeks ago, President Rouhani of Iran admitted that our sanctions have cost Iran over $200 billion in lost foreign income and investment. As long as Iran's outlaws ways continue, we will continue to impose sanctions. Finally, I want to reiterate President Trump's concern for Americans and dual national citizens detained inside of Iran. Iran knows that these individuals have committed no crime. They know the charges against them are fake. And we will do all that we can to get each of them returned home safely to their families.